Hey, business building warrior, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio, the podcast that features hundreds of successful students who have gone through the proven Amazon course training, which is our flagship Amazon seller training for any level, brand new clueless newbies, all the way up to experienced pros who are looking for a new cutting edge strategy to enhance what they've already built. That's what this show is. And today's no exception. We've got a great guest today. And his name's Carl Jacoby. He's been in our community, as I just recalled today, listening to, I can't believe it's been a decade already. He started off as a clueless newbie, just like a lot of people in our community, but he's built a beautiful business. He's sold approximately 40 million now on Amazon, specifically using wholesale strategies, some very unique wholesale strategies that he's developed. And we've got it all for you in a course that is now launched. He's going to be the teacher. You're going to have a chance to interact with him live if you're listening to our episodes when they first drop, which is what we encourage. This is a summer 2024 thing, and we're going to be launching it with today's podcast episode. So you can go to provenwholesalesourcing.com. That's provenwholesalesourcing.com and jump in and see what we've got going for you there, working with Carl, who's the guy you're about to meet. Now, Carl says he didn't even finish high school. He, he made to the point, he's like, I got my GED, but he didn't even finish high school. It's not a matter of having some business degree or some high-end training to be able to do what Carl's doing. It's a matter of being willing to build relationships, make some phone calls, reach out to brands that meet certain criteria, which we're going to tell you all about, and you need to contact these thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of brands right now on Amazon are underrepresented, underserved, and need help. And if you can reach out to them and build a, a relationship with them, you can begin selling their products on Amazon, maybe even have an exclusive relationship. That's wholesale. Now, who is this for today? Carl and I spend some time on that after we go through his story, but this is specifically for people who have at least a little bit of experience on Amazon as far as getting into this new training, the proven wholesale sourcing.com training is for those who have at least a minimal understanding of the replen system. We teach in the proven Amazon course. If you can read a keep a chart, if you know how to make good inventory buying decisions, you've sold a few thousand dollars. Okay. You're qualified and ready to get into this training. It's going to be live classes with Carl recorded. Of course, if you miss them, you can rewatch the sessions. If you come in a little late after it's already started, you can still join and get caught up, but we're going to be recording these live and you can interact with in a Facebook group with others who are going through the experience with you. That's proven wholesale sourcing. We mentioned some resources today, and I just want to remind you that you can always go to our show notes and you can see links to everything we mentioned, specifically one of the tools that we're super excited that that really helps smooth the process of finding great wholesale accounts that you can work with is a tool called Smart Scout. And there's a special offer they've given us on that tool. If you go to silentgym.com slash SS, as in Smart Scout, you'll see the special offer that we have there. Everyone who goes through the proven wholesale sourcing is going to be encouraged to get Smart Scout as a tool. Anything else you hear mentioned today, we'll have links in the show notes as well. Just wanted to point that out to you. I think that is enough of uh, an introduction. Again, it's launched. If you're hearing this podcast episode, Proven Wholesale Sourcing has launched. Carl's the guy that's going to be teaching it. And we're going to spend just a little bit of time as I get him on the line here in just a moment, talking about Carl's story, his history, so you can get to know him a little bit. Who is this guy that's going to be teaching this class? And then we're going to jump into, in the second half of our interview today, exactly what the Proven Wholesale Sourcing class is exactly what's going to be covered, what you can expect as you go through this class. So you can make a good decision about jumping in and being a part of it with us. And again, this guy sold $40 million of wholesale. He knows his stuff. He's landed almost a hundred different wholesale accounts and worked with them closely. This is a great mentor and guide for you. A guy that I love, trust, and respect. Great leader in our community. Let's get him on the line right now. Carl Jacoby. Let's go. So Carl, my friend, welcome back to Silent Sales Machine Radio. Good to see you, man. It's good to see you, dude. Appreciate you having me back, man. Appreciate it's it. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. And we took too long to hit the record button today, man. We're covering some good stuff. I'm so <laughs> excited to have you, brother, back on the show. And, and to, for a recap, you know, I hit some of this in the intro, but just, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of your story, and let's get into what we got today. Yeah. So again, thanks again for having me, man. I'm blessed. And uh, it's been an easy opportunity to be here to talk to you and also talk to your audience. So a little bit of a story. I discovered e-commerce, man, while I was still in the military overseas. And it was really just 
selling random stuff on, on eBay, selling car parts, guitar stuff, music stuff, random things that, uh, that I could sell. And it wasn't really just to make money. I was, you know, just purging stuff and things that I needed. Then I realized, man, I, I can actually make money. We're talking 99, 2000, right? So, you know, a couple of years ago. <laughs> so that's where the bug kind of hit me. I was like, man, this, you know, I can actually make some money, you know, doing, you know, this as a hobby. And that's where it all kind of sparked. Yeah, you know, I continued as a side hustle. I've always been an entrepreneur. I just didn't know it as an entrepreneur. I just didn't like the fact somebody was controlling how much money I made, how much, what kind of clothes I could wear or whatever, because I can what only- time you had to show up, when you could leave, ask permission exactly. for vacations. Yeah, it's yes. I mean, that 20 years ago, I, I couldn't, I was just dying to get out of that environment, dude. That's why I got into e-commerce. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So, you know, fast forward 10, almost 10, a little more 10 years, still, you know, I was still a defense contractor, traveled around, uh, looking for ways to make some more money, man. And um, I discovered Amazon. And of course, I, man, I opened a can of worms. I posted on Facebook, hey, what's a, you know, good avenue of making money? you know, that could lead into a full-time job or a full-time business that I could do as a, you know, starting on the side, but not have to go somewhere every day. Right. And man, dude, I, I think I've probably got pinged with a hundred or plus more messages of the latest direct sales opportunities, the most amazing yeah. businesses, right. this, that, and the other, Hey, I can make you rich, blah, blah, blah. Like, come on, man. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. But somebody had posted this, hey, you ever thought about selling Amazon? I'm like, wait, what? Amazon? Like, what's this? Like, okay, I buy from Amazon. My wife buys from Amazon. Like, everybody buys from Amazon, right? But I didn't think you can actually sell on Amazon. I thought you were actually buying from, like, when you go to Walmart, you're buying a product off the Walmart shelf, and Walmart's the one that's supplying it. They didn't think it was, you know, the mass house that it is with third-party sellers. It didn't register to me. So that intrigued me. I'm like, okay, well. Talk to me about it. So well, I'll go to this community here. It's called My Silent Team. And so, you know, that's why I plugged into the community, My Silent Team. Of course, this was a few moons ago. We're probably talking 2013, 2014-ish. And uh, so that's where the really kind of the journey had began. But I started out the knucklehead way. What I mean by that is, is I did everything you should not do. I started out in OA, I hired, you know, five, six VAs and bought everything they say to buy. If you're listening to this, don't do that. <laughs> Let me hit people with a couple acronyms, man, before we move on. So you mentioned mm -hmm. My Silent Team. That's our free Facebook group. Link to it mm -hmm. at silentgym.com. It's 76,000 members now. Do you happen to remember how big it was when you joined 10 years ago? Well, we oh. have maybe 10, 20,000. I don't know. Yeah, it was like in the 20s, if I remember right, yeah. man. Yeah, so it just it continued to grow. We've continued to kind of tweak and adjust, obviously, our models, but teach basically the same thing, low-risk models, and that's that's where you got your start. But you mentioned OA, online arbitrage. You mentioned Correct. VA, virtual assistant. So mm -hmm. the, it's kind of like most of the, the lazy man's way. It's like, hey, I love the business model. I'm going to hire some people real cheap in the Philippines and just tell them to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, they're going to send me stuff and I'm going to buy it. Like, yep. only, you're cutting corners, man. So you start off cutting a few corners, trying to. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. I did it the knucklehead way. Instead of knowing how to do the task, how to do the job. I just said, okay, you know how to do it. Go ahead and roll with it. I'll trust what you tell me. So I, I can't quantify how much money I spent, but my wife got kind of aggravated because you know the living room was stacked full of boxes of products. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up sending it in and, and I, I lost all that money. So I quit, man. And it just really just, yeah, I, I quit, but I stayed in the community. I stayed plugged in and... Um, yeah, probably fast forward six, seven months. Work environment was toxic. I needed to do something different, you know, with my life. And uh, and I'm seeing I'm seeing a ton of success stories, man, uh, in the community. And uh, you know, a few of them are like, man, dude, didn't that this guy just start like two weeks ago, a month ago, six months ago, and that dude's already cranking out thirty thousand dollars a month, hundred thousand dollars a month. Hmm, there must be something to this Amazon thing. So. I kind of hit the reset button. I went back into the, the proven Amazon course, the PAC course, and uh, signed up for it. I really applied myself this time. This, but that time I started out with books. Like, you know what, you know, low risk way can I start 
sell on Amazon, then buy, you know, buying 25 cent books that I could sell for 15, 20 on hire. There was a local college nearby where, you know, I was actually getting used textbooks for 15 bucks and flipping them for three or $400. So that got me familiar with the process of, you know, sourcing to learn how to read rank, learn how to read Keepa, you know, learning how to do things the right way, learn how to create shipments, really just, you know, apply myself and apply the knowledge of you know, utilizing the Amazon platform and not be intimidated by the, the intricacies and complexities that the platform can present. At that time, it was, I thought it was complex. You know, if I had to do it again today, I, I'd probably uh, be pretty intimidated. But uh, so that's where I got my start, man. Then eventually I moved over into just random clearance aisles and Walmart's targets and, and really trying to just embrace the retail arbitrage or RA model then that's where I really got to learn how to really read Keepa because you know, I'm looking at various categories, right? You can't just look at rank like, oh, 45,000 in toys or 40, you know, 300,000 in health and beauty. Well, as you well know, you can't just look at rank and be like, that's a winner. You got to right. look in Keepa, yeah. right? So, you mentioned Keepa. I just want to make sure the listeners know if they mm-hmm. don't know what Keepa is, go to podcast episode number 369 of this show. And we explain why, what it is, why we love it, what it does that no other tool does. It's super inexpensive. We've got an affiliate link, silentgym.com slash Keepa, K-E-E-P-A. I think they give us like a piece of chewing gum and 15 cents or something. If you use that link, seriously, man, I've referred thousands of users. <laughs> I think I've made 50 bucks over the years, but uh, it's a great tool and you need the paid version. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a pivotal tool. We're not going to jump into what it does right now, but I didn't want to let that fly past Carl without making sure people knew how to go check it out a little more. But 369 is the episode you want to check out. I've said it so many times, I got it memorized, man. (laughs) Yeah, you start learning how to read a keep a chart, get a little more intentional about your sourcing. You're not just looking at rank and price. You're actually knowing how to read the historical data on on Mm -hmm. ASINs. Yep. Yep, 100%. So fast forward, I don't know, probably one or two years, uh, I ran into the Legends group, and it was really pretty much right after uh, one of the Proven Q4 sessions that we used to do, our Proven Q4 groups, and uh, ran into Ryan and Danny Stock, and and um, yeah, and linked up in the Legends group. This was pretty much when Legends was first kicking off, and yeah, I'm probably dating myself a little bit in that, but that's where Legends was pretty much kicking off. There's probably... F- I don't know, 30 or 40 of us at the time when it first came to be. So, and that's a whole where the replens model came to be, you know, where I learned how to find products that you can buy at retail and sell over and over and over again, not have to rely on the clearance aisles when it may be amazing today. You can buy it for five bucks and keep us showing it's been consistent at 40, but by the time you get there, it's down to probably 15 because guess what? A hundred of other people found it too. They saw the sale as well. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Exactly. So then, you know, I learned a replens model and, and man, it took me a long time to figure that out. Like I was banging my head against the wall of, you know, grasping the concept of finding replens and reverse sourcing, you know, how the concept of reverse sourcing or manual sourcing works. It took me a while, but I eventually got it. And, uh, and, you know, of course, Jimmy Smith ran with it, you know, learned and systemized it and really just created a pretty amazing business off of replens. And so yeah, we've helped thousands of people at this point, man. It blows my mind. This that system yeah. we developed and we continue to tweak and we got a team supporting it now off that simple concept of the, the best way I explain it now when people are like, what replens? What are you talking about? I describe it as filling the underserved shelf space at Amazon with easily sourced inventory. 100%. And because they've got hundreds of warehouses. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the most pop, even the most popular items aren't on the FBA shelves at Amazon's warehouse right now, but hundreds of warehouses, they might be on a handful of warehouse yeah. shelves, but they have hundreds of warehouses. Mm-hmm. If somebody wants it fast and they don't have one near them, there's a sale lost because there's underserved shelf space at that warehouse. Yep. And once you learn to see Amazon through that lens of all this underserved shelf space and start filling it with the right products. It's a pretty cool business model, man, with low risk. And, and that's what we yes. do around here. We've really perfected this over time with dozens of strategies for playing the game. But uh, you're one of the early adapters. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud of the fact that now there's, you know, 
you'll see the terminology we use in our group kind of trickled out all over the web. Mm-hmm. And people are, people are yep. talking about it as if it's like always yep. been there, but no, this is terminology we invented in this group. Yep. And you can see, you see great success stories as a result. And you're one of them. Uh, so yep. yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Keep it going. Yes. Man. It's been an interesting journey. So yeah. So yeah, I finally grasped the concept of replens and uh, hit up all the stores I could possibly hit up. Uh, Walmart and, you know, your, your typical, you know, chain stores, right? But where I really found the goal was in regional stores because the products you find in these regional stores are not same as, say, for example, you know, we just moved here to Sarasota, Florida, what, three years ago, two years ago from Alabama. We lived there 13 years. In that area, man, there was so much stuff there we could find that you couldn't find in, say, Seattle, Washington, or in California, and vice versa, right? You could probably find things in California and Washington that you're not going to find in Alabama. So I quickly learned that there is a lot of gold in the regional stores because there, people move, right? In today's age, people move all the time or they visit or what have you. And people are looking for, like you said, you know, they're looking for these products because, you know, if somebody moved from Alabama to California or, or overseas, they, they want that product and they're willing to pay pretty much any price to a degree to get that product, especially if it comes today, if they order it today. So I ran into wholesale by accident, just merely saying, hey, man, I don't want to keep wiping out your shelves. And we're talking pallets, man. I'm not talking like just a couple of cases. We're talking pallets of inventory that I was buying from these stores, loading up my pickup. And man, <laughs> you're talking about you know a squatted pickup. I, I definitely earned the title of squatted pickup of the year. You know, with Dragging loaded inventory. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can probably hear it grinding on on the on the asphalt. But uh, you know, driving about thirty miles to get to my warehouse at the time. But I learned the wholesale concept by accident. I was like, "Hey, listen! Instead of me wiping out your shelves and, and really doing a disservice to your customers and you because you're not able to make money, let me buy direct. You know, either through a brand distributor or what have you, or at least order in bulk from you." So that's where I kind of pick up, you know, picked up the wholesale model, if you will, was buying direct. You know, a lot of times it would connect me directly to the distributor or the brand. If it was like a small local brand, I got connected directly to the brand. And, and that's essentially how I got into wholesale. Uh, I would order you know, tens of thousands of dollars of inventory. They would get loaded up. I drive over to the warehouse or I get dropped off the warehouse and we're off to the races. So and I quick, and then I realized I'm like, So I don't have to go to the store. I can just call the distributor, call the brand, like, hey, listen, I like to order X, Y, Z. Here's a purchase order for X amount. What was the turnaround time? Or, you know, so I love that model. Uh, I really did. I mean, it really allowed me to create a predictable, scalable, safe business model where, you know, at least in where I was at in Alabama, I didn't have a whole lot of stores to leverage. I didn't have 10 Walmarts in a one or t- you know five mile radius. I had one Walmart. Right. I had probably two or three Dollar Trees, maybe, and a lot of waffle houses and Chinese food restaurants. <laughs> so so my, my pickings were slim, you know, but we did have a lot of regional stores. We actually had a lot more regional stores than, than your chain stores. So that's how the wholesale model came to me, man. And it allowed me to really scale fast because I didn't have to worry about the stock level at the store. I didn't have to worry about, you know, oh, you know, that store wasn't able to get their fulfillment order because a lot of these stores don't order directly from the brands. They order from distributors. Distributors, yeah. Yep. And distributors, you know, they 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 go off of buy patterns, you know, so... You know, if they don't have enough inventory at their warehouses to fill a, say, you know, a $10,000 purchase order of one product I ordered, then they're not going to get fulfilled. Whereas if I go directly to the brand, if I submit a $10,000 PO, there's a huge likelihood that's going to get fulfilled because I'm more from the source, right? Right. Or the manufacturer. Right. So, yeah, I quickly, you know, dived into that. For a while, we did a hybrid model. Uh, you know, we did, re, you know, t- traditional replans where I had shoppers that would go to the store and pick up things and either find new products or just replenish on what we need to replenish. But we were aggressively trying to tip the scales into wholesale, especially as we're coming into COVID at that time. And that's where I was really getting heavy into wholesale because all the stores were shutting down. 
you know, in our area, everything was shutting down. People couldn't go anywhere. You know, lockdown started to occur. So it really became, I wouldn't say mandatory, but if you're going to thrive as an e-commerce business, you, you had to get creative. And they were, they were shutting down FBA shipments or fulfillment by Amazon shipments because, you know, the warehouses were not be able to operate at capacity. So we then had to use uh, fulfilled by merchant. And uh, so COVID really kind of kicked our fire business. If anybody launched their business in this time could probably agree to this or attest to this, we probably experienced a good 10-year leap in wholesale or not wholesale, but in e-commerce in that 18 to 24 month period with COVID yeah. in but terms of growth and yeah, e-commerce. Actually, I know the numbers uh, because I I saw uh, I researched it shortly after. We took basically a five year leap into the future on the trajectory mm. of e-commerce overtaking traditional retail. In eighteen months, we took a five year leap. It was basically how we went from about fourteen percent of all retail being online to eighteen or nineteen percent of all retail being online, which doesn't sound like much, but that was a huge leap into the future. And it really hasn't slowed down since. I mean, the trajectory is some people are surprised that it's still less than 20%. We're right at about 20% of all retail in the U S is online, but that number is growing rapidly, which is why I always say when people, when people say, Oh, it's saturated. It's like, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You haven't even looked at the numbers. You, you're obviously just going off of like, well, my buddy said it's harder this year than it was last year. And you're, so you're choosing to say that's saturation. No, the game's changing constantly. Sure. But it's growing so rapidly. This blue ocean is expanding faster than we're able to keep track of it. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> well, one, and one thing I want to point out, too, is you've done all this through a replens lens, meaning you're using Keepa decision-making skills to choose mm -hmm. what you're going to sell. You're not bringing new products to the market and mm -hmm. hoping they sell. You're looking no. at the momentum that's already in place on existing listings on Amazon and saying, ooh, that's underserved. Mm -hmm. There needs to be more inventory. And I can source it at a profitable price and serve that ASIN very well. And not you're not setting up. Have you ever set up any of your own new listings? We have, yes. You Towards have later, of some of the yes. exclusive relationships, I imagine, you got into. Correct. Yeah, we wouldn't do it just because. Oh, we found this new product in the store. We're going to create new listings. No, we didn't. We didn't do that. We only went after existing listings. We didn't really do a whole lot at listing optimization for existing listings. Because if they're already selling amazingly well and the listing looks like crap, I'm not going to you know, make it more attractive for another seller to come on there and be like, oh, I want to join this party. Right. You know, so no, we didn't create new listings unless, you know, we had an exclusive relationship with the brand, which was much later in you know, in the journey. And our first exclusive actually was a, an, you know, another accident. But uh, no, I, it, it really has been an amazing journey for us as a business and, you know, in, in watching a business scale, it did scale very fast through the COVID area, just like anybody else's. And I hear a lot of people say, man, Amazon's, you know, it is saturated. I can't find anything, blah, blah, blah. We find brands on a daily basis that we can go after that we know we can make money off of. So Yes, I've been doing this for a while. Yes, my team has been doing this for a while, but I'm no different than anybody else. If I can read Keepa, if I can learn how to read Smart Scout, if I can learn how to, or you know, use Smart Scout and use some very basic data, anybody can do this. I mean, my kids were doing it. Yeah, you know, at the time they were uh, what ten years old, uh, all the way up through thirteen years old, and it's, and they've continued their own journey. They have since you know sold their businesses and done other things. But you know, if I can do this, and my kids can do this, you know, anybody can do this. And the platform is not saturated. I constantly go to trade shows and find brands that are either not on the platform or they're not being served well on the platform that are willing to do business with you. And that's the main common thing I see with a lot of, you know, I hate to see Amazon sellers, but people that sell on Amazon to go to these brands, they approach them the wrong way. You know, they, they approach them with the mindset of dollars instead of developing that relationship first. Mm. What I later learned, you know, was a trick. I don't even remember where I picked this up from, but I would actually go up there, you know, to, to the booths and whatever with a, a pseudo PO or a fake PO and be like, listen, I mean, I would love to sell you products. You know, we're uh, a retail company down south, blah, blah, blah. Give them a brief introduction. Tell them who we are, what we're about. 
and give them a PO. So listen, I would love to buy these products. I actually have a purchase order right here. I could pay in cash or we could do terms, which, you know, terms meaning I have 30 days to pay or 90 days. And we have some accounts we could, you know, leverage 180. We had 180 days to pay uh, an invoice. But we had to place a, a pretty sizable order for those things or for those kind of terms. But the trick I learned was if you came to them seriously, right, and you gave them a PO and you knew exactly what you wanted, you know exactly how you can add value to the brand and develop a relationship. And sometimes, they, a lot, I would say sometimes, a lot of times they were like, no, you know, we're good. But, okay, you're good. Can we stay in touch? Because I'm sure at some point in, in our in your future, you're going to want somebody to rein in your your Amazon, you know, presence or Walmart. And if anybody's listening, I said this in the last episode or last podcast I did with you. A lot of people are approaching it the wrong way, in the sense of, hey, can I get an account because I sell on Amazon? Yeah, I actually lead in with Walmart first. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you know, we have a massive presence on Walmart. And yes, we do Amazon. I mean, why wouldn't we do on Amazon? That's the largest marketplace on earth. I'd be foolish not to, right? And kind of flip the script back on them, you know, to you know, I mean, I would be foolish not to sell on Amazon. But I, I love to use Walmart first because it really changes their mindset because they're quick, they're gonna be quick to say no because they're gonna you're gonna say the A word, A word being Amazon. Right. Right. So as soon as you lead in a Walmart, their their stance changes. You can see them relax a little bit. Oh, well, we ain't really thought about Walmart. Bingo. Right. There's right. your I you know what I shared that tip with Scott Needham, the creator of Smart Scout, which you mentioned. And mm-hmm. I'll give the listeners a little tip on Smart Scout here in a second as well. But he had never heard that. He loved it. He's like, dude, I'm gonna use that. So you <laughs> so I gotta give you credit, man. He was on an episode, maybe I don't know, eight or ten shows before this one. Uh, he's the creator of Smart Scout. Yep. Who's Amazing dude himself. He's done a, a lot of wholesale and he built that yes. tool for people who are doing wholesale. And again, uh, we're going to be do, using that tool as part of the wholesale training that we're going to be talking oh, yes. about in this episode, the proven wholesale mm-hmm. sourcing. I mentioned it in the intro, proven wholesale sourcing.com, but smart scouts, one of the tools. And the link to that is silentgym.com slash SS as in smart scout, by the way, they set up a great special deal for us. We're one of the top affiliates for that tool, because we teach wholesale here around here and people use that. And once you start to unpack Amazon through the smart scout lens, you can see these opportunities hopping out a lot faster than any other strategy. But yeah, I wanted to let you know, Carl, that that whole Walmart strategy, because it's true. You go to brands, especially if they're mainstream at all, like a trade show or whatever, they've talked about Amazon with other people, but they haven't talked about Walmart a lot. And they haven't mm-hmm. talked with someone who's truly going to build a relationship with them and take care of their listings and represent their product well. I mean, I, I was on the phone just yesterday with a coach on our team who landed a major shoe brand. I recognized the name of the, the boot brand by just having a conversation. And yeah, we're approached all the time. It's like, well, but you're not approached all the time by somebody like me. I'm going to care about the brand. I've been doing this a while. I come from a community that lives, eats, breathes, and sleeps Amazon. I'm not just another guy asking for an Amazon account. Right? You build a relationship yes. and you're persistent. And if they yes. say no, you get back with them later. And mm-hmm. right, So that it's a relationship yes. thing that kind of tips the scale. For every wholesale success story I'm hearing, it's a relationship. It's not you use the it right is. tools and sent 500 emails. It's you're intentionally following up with people, you're recognizing the opportunity, you're looking mm-hmm. at their brand on Amazon and you're looking for key indicators. This is a brand that's underserved in the market space, right? So yes. just filling in some gaps for the listeners on kind of where we're heading uh, with this wholesale training. And we've got proof of concept. We've got a lot of people using these strategies successfully to, to build their wholesale businesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's a huge gap, in my opinion. That's heavily underutilized. I mean, it seems to be a theme word that we've used for the last what two, three years at the conference, right? Relationships. Yeah. I can't quantify. I'm not going to see a lot, but I do see a fair amount of people that come into this game, if you will, to this this business, and think they're going to make money immediately. Well, well, you probably make some money, right? So I'm not going to say you won't make some. But this is not a short game. This is a long game. And it's it will be quantified in terms of your success by the amount of relationships, good relationships that you have in the industry. Well, anything right? worth I having mean, in we, life, Carl, it's not like we're breaking, you know, breaking new ground with this concept. True. 
anything worth having in life, it's going to take consistent work over a significant period of time. Yes. Nothing worth having in life comes super easy because you click the button. Right? Mm -hmm. And but somehow e-commerce has gotten this reputation of like, oh, if I hit the right buttons and I do the right software, it's going to tell me exactly what to sell. I'm going to make a bunch of money next week. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people selling that out there. We don't sell that yep. here. We're actually fighting against that message constantly. It is relationships it's time but what we've done is we've eliminated as much of the risk as possible and mm -hmm. shrunk the learning curve as short as we possibly can so you can start getting we call it earning while you learn as you ramp yes. up I mean, even the bible says wealth hastily gained is soon departed we don't want you to make a ton of money next week that's just as scary as striking out right yes. we want you to scale in slow we want that nice smooth slow learning curve and, and that's how you build a beautiful business. And that means relationships and yes, time, effort, energy, persistence, those kinds of things, which you've demonstrated. And it's not all, you know, rainbows and cherries, obviously, mm -mm. but, but you've, you've built a beautiful life for you and your family and, and done very well as a result of these concepts. So I'm, I'm excited to have you in a leadership role for, for this next, next season, but well, let's transition yeah. into uh, a little more specifics of um, you know, we've, we've hit your story and I know there's 50 stories we could tell, and I know a lot yep. of them, <laughs> and mm -hmm. they're all fun, but let's dial into the proven wholesale sourcing class, who it's for, what you're going to cover. Let's hit some specifics there. And then anything else that's on your mind as well, obviously, but I want to make sure and get that in. Yeah, hundred percent. So, you know, the foundation's pretty, you know, we're basically building upon what's already been there, right. From other people. Wholesale as a, as a whole doesn't really change a whole lot, but it's all the strategies, all the new tools, software, someone like myself that has been doing this for a little bit, you know, what seems like a long time. This is where, the, you know, it's going to come in a gravy. You know, we've done north of 40 million total in lifetime sales on the Amazon platform. That's not including, you know, Walmart that we've done or anything else. This is just Amazon as a whole. So, what I'm teaching in this revamp is are the strategies that we actively employ today. We're not just talking about it. These are strategies that we employ today, things that we've learned, trial and error. Like, oh man, this is pretty cool. Oh man, this we found this new tip, this new strategy in this tool. We're gonna, you know, exploit the heck out of it. It works. It really helped us scale our business. And so these are the strategies that I'm teaching in a course. For example, you know, Smart Scout, you know, I've learned some tactics from Smart Scout that nobody is talking about. And I'm not going to give a tip because they're going to have to get into the course to learn about it. Sorry, you know, that's the price of tuition. Yeah. But, you know, all the modules I'm, that I'm covering now, you do need to have some experience on the platform, right? So you can't come in here, you've never created a ship and never sold anything like, and, you know, expect to get, you'll get some value, but you're not going to be able to walk away with value that you can employ today. Right. right. You need to have some foundation, foundational experience, some, you know, some fundamentals in place, created some shipments, made a few, at least a few thousand dollars. So you know how the platform works, have a basic knowledge of how Keepa works. Then once you've got that, I mean, we're off to the races. You know, I, I've put in topics and modules and content to address all aspects, regardless of where you're on the spectrum. We're going to talk about advanced level stuff and, and later in the course that it really kind of dump gas onto my business in the companies that we've had to really scale and grow and automate to where you're removing yourself from the whole picture, right? You're, you're not an operator, you're a business owner. So, you know, for me, that's a big mission for me is, you know, I don't want to just train operators. I want to train business owners so they can fulfill their mission as a, a business owner, not an operator because an operator you're still in the business, right? You're still working 10, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours. You know, I don't want that. I actually, unless you do want that, right? I mean, some people, you know, they want that life, but I don't think, you know, you're getting I don't think anybody got into this business because they want to work 10, 12 hours. They got into this business because they want the flexibility. They want to be able to travel. They want to do things. They want to experience life. So I'm coming, you know, for the advanced strategies, I'm coming in from an operator or from an operator to business owner perspective, how to completely remove yourself to where you're only checking in once a week with some basic reports and make sure the ship is going in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Checking your stats. It kind of like yep. a, a Kang on our team. He went on vacation yes. for three weeks. He's got $3 million business, checked his stats when he felt like it, you know, yep. and has yeah, a, yeah, they just kill 
couple people in his warehouse and a couple of VAs yes. running the whole thing, right? Like we want that. We can't get you there in a in a month. No. But these strategies played out over time. We that's what we do around here. We help you build a real business, a real asset. So yeah, outstanding. You're the you're the right guy to be doing this too. Cause like you said, you kind of said it in passing, but you've done 40 million in sales through these mm -hmm. wholesale strategies that you've developed. Like you've been doing this a while. And, and yes. you, we talked before we hopped on the call today, before we hit the record button, that's, that's dozens and dozens of accounts that you've landed, Yes, you know, close mm -hmm. to a hundred, right? Accounts, wholesale accounts yes. that you've landed. So like, you know how to do this, how to get out there and find them and build the relationships. And I, I'm excited to invite people in. And just to recap what I think I heard you say, who's qualified. Mm -hmm. If you understand Keepa the way we teach it in the Proven Amazon course, which means you can see through a, a replens lens, any ASIN on Amazon, that's the pre-qualification. You've sold a few, you've made a few shipments, you've sent a few things in. If you're not there yet, get the Proven Amazon course. We can get you there in a couple months, get you ramped up to where you are ready for this. Because uh, the course, th there's a date, a launch date at provenwholesalesourcing.com right now. There's a date. It's probably a week or two out from the launch of this podcast episode that you're listening to today. So the course may have already started. You can jump in a little late. That's fine. But Carl's going to actually, you're going to actually take people through these modules, correct? Mm -hmm. Like this is an interactive experience for the correct. people who jump in at the beginning of this thing, uh, capturing the recordings and that sort of thing. So let's talk logistics a little bit. Like if someone signs up, what happens there? You know, we're going to do this in a Facebook group, correct? Yes. Yes. We're going to utilize a Facebook group. You know, we're going to do live sessions. And that way we have a nice Q&A at the end to make sure, you know, all, anybody's questions, concerns are answered. You know, we're providing that networking experience as well so that everybody can learn. Because, you know, there may be tips and strategies. Somebody's been doing this for either longer than me or a little less time than me that you've learned something that I can learn, right? Or teach something I can learn. But it's the content, you know, we're, we're, we're sticking, you know, very, we're going very basic. We're talking about mindset and fundamentals. We're going to talk about SOPs and how to automate your business with systems, how to outsource suppliers, you know, how to find suppliers, get really creative in that, how to find products, the two methods that we use in our business to find products. We don't just rely on one specific standard for finding products. We actually employ a hybrid of two, which I think is nobody's talking about. They're only talking about one method or the other. We're actually employing a hybrid so that we're, yes, we're, you know, at scale, we're, we're uncovering hundreds or even thousands of ASINs in a pretty quick time. We're also uncovering a lot of hidden gold that, no, you know, that, that's not found. So we're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, how to get exclusives, you know, that's, you know, something that I think you, you mentioned the other day that you're either getting ready to get on a podcast, but there's somebody out there is killing you, you know, doing exclusives. You want to talk about a way to really provide some predictability in your business. Exclusives is probably one of the most sound ways you can create predictivity or, you know, create some scalability and predictability in your business because, as long as you serve that relationship well, you, you're in it for the relationship, you're in it for the impact and not for the transaction, your business is going to do very, very well. Yeah, and, and I think and that's one of the areas, key areas where we saw, we had soared was in the exclusives game. Because once we learned how to do that, how to scale it, how to employ systems, how to employ people and really maximize the platform, that's why I think we're really kind of kicked our business off into the stratosphere. And I just want to make sure we define what exclusives are, which mm. has served you so well. And, and yeah, another great leader in our community, actually a coach on our team. I'm not going to call him out. I don't want his phone to blow up, but I was having a conversation with him, just a simple conversation with a brand and making his pitch like, hey, we want to sell your brand. And they, they got approached all the time, but he deployed strategies to convince them that he was worth listening to. And he won it. It's like, I couldn't believe they gave it to me, <laughs> but, but they did. You have enough of those conversations. You're going to have brands and exclusive is basically just a brand saying, Hey, we don't want a bunch of resellers, but we'll take a handful. How do you get into that handful? We'll take one more, right? How do you become that one more on these major brands, which opens up the whole catalog. And you know, it, it, you've got to find ways to bring value. Other people are just saying, Hey, I want to buy your stuff cheap so I can sell it on Amazon. Like if you can separate yourself from that pack, mm -hmm the doors are going to fly open. Things like, yes. hey, I've noticed some opportunities with your brand that aren't being capitalized on. I've noticed mm -hmm. some abuse of your brand on some of the ASINs. 
I've noticed there's some things that are happening that are probably some sellers violating your policies. And you start speaking the language with some intelligence and actually caring about the relationship. Suddenly you're in a different stack of, you know, yeah. think of it almost like resumes coming in for a job. You got the 80 resumes that are, that are easy to ignore. <laughs> These are clowns. Yep. You got this handful. You want to be in that handful of like, okay, they did at least a little bit of homework, right? <laughs> Before they approach yes. it, they know how to have a bit of a conversation intelligently. It's not just a random, you know, template email that blasts out. It's, it's it, that's who wins the wholesale game. And I'm not talking, you know, lengthy extended sales pitch with a, with a deck and a slideshow. I'm just speak with some intelligence about mm -hmm. the brand and about what you've noticed on Amazon and make some key observations and talk a little bit about Walmart. No one's talked to us about that before. Right. So those, those are the kind of advantages that you've used. And Correct. Yeah, so it, it really is a, it's a wide open door. You don't have to be a salesperson. You don't have to go to all no. the trade shows, but you do have to be willing to have conversations. I would say that's probably 100%. a low bar, right? Get on yep. the phone, hop on zoom, if at all possible. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speak to that a little bit. We're talking about exclusives and having brands. Did you hop on the phone or how many of these did you close face-to-face -face versus getting on the phone versus the Zoom? Like, I, I don't think I've ever asked you that before. Kind of process through that for me. Like, what's the reality been for you? So the reality behind it, I think a lot of the relationships were started at trade shows because I learned, and I've heard you talk about this, one of the quickest way you can establish a relationship is in face, face, come, at least, you know, be able to shake somebody's hand. But I think majority, actually, I'm pretty confident. I would say at least 90% of the relationships were closed on a Zoom call. But the relationship may have been established in person or on a phone call. But 90% of the time, that relationship was closed over a Zoom call. But we had some good conversations. We're asking tons of questions. Like, we're we're, we're listening, right? We're like, hey, okay, what's, what's your pain point? What, what do you feel is, you know, why do you feel that you're not being served? Is it because of MAP violations? Is it because somebody's, you know, not honoring, you know, your, your minimum advertised price, you know, on the platform? Is it because your list, your listing images look like somebody took it on the couch and it's now on, on display? Yeah. It, it, this is real, right? Yeah. Or your listing title only has one word or one character, you know, so we're, we're playing a lot of listening because we want them to talk. We want them to mm -hmm. initiate the conversation of what their pain points are. Then we're like, oh, okay. Well, let me talk to you about this brand that we serve that, you know, when we first found them, they, were, they had 127 unauthorized sellers, blah, blah, blah. And we now we've got them down to one. We brought the brand from doing $10,000 a month to $500,000 a month. So while, yes, the relationships were, were nice to have in person, but that's not where we closed them. We closed them over conversations like you and I are having over a Zoom or a phone call. Yeah. And just based on what you just now said, Carl, let me just give people a little confidence boost. You're going to be in a community of people now who have done these types of things, including you, Carl, a handful of others on our team. So you can go to these brands and say, yeah, I'm in a group of sellers yes. who have helped brands go from dozens of pain in the butt sellers destroying their listings down to just a handful with better looking yep. listings and better results. I'm in a group that that's what we do. That's the stuff we yes. talk about. Like that's what I've trained for. I'm not just a guy saying, give me your best price on your wholesale list so I can order a bunch of stuff, please. I want to sell it. No, I'm in a group of people that study these concepts and we've identified your brand specifically through some research as one that could really benefit from what it is 100%. that we talk about all day, every day. Right. So now you've just got that credibility You've never done it yourself before is the point I'm making, but you're in a group of people who are doing it. Yes. That's enough to tip the scale of a conversation. Yes. Like, oh, okay. And then I want to speak to this Zoom call thing. I call this like, it's just like a magic power that people just don't use anymore. But instead of an email, get them on the phone. And if at all possible, if you want a 10X result, get them on a Zoom. Yes. I've even told my coaching team, you better have a really good reason not to do a Zoom with somebody. If they're like, no, I refuse to do a Zoom. Okay, that's cool. Otherwise, do a Zoom because yes. you've got 10 times the power of the connection, the communication, understanding each other, seeing each other. Something good's going to happen. You're going to figure each other out so much faster with Zoom Agreed. than you will on a phone. So I love that you. that's part of what you teach is uh, yes. yeah, get them on 100%. Because 99% of the people approaching them aren't even thinking that way. It's just an email. Can I have your wholesale mm -hmm. catalog? I want to buy a bunch of stuff, sell it on Amazon, to delete. Right. Yep. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. Well, on a Zoom call, pretty similar to in person, you're able to read the person's body language. You're able to to have the 
as much as you can a post, you know, a face-to-face relationship. You can read their body language. You can see their facial expressions. If they're falling asleep, then you're you're obviously are not hitting the touch points, right? Yeah. So yes, I mean, Zoom call is is one of the most underrated tools. Now it took off since COVID, you know, but. I think a lot of people got comfortable with email mm-hmm. and got comfortable with just being lazy. Like, oh, I'll just blast out 50 emails today. Uh, okay, I'm going to kick your tail because I'm doing 10 Zoom calls a day and really harnessing on relationships and working those reps versus just randomly blasting out emails. Yes, well done. And they don't get asked to do that very often, except by professionals and people who really know what they're doing. So that's a lot of Correct. what people are going to to experience. And, and let me, I want to speak to this too. I just, I'm kind of trying to put my mind in the, uh, in the mind of the listener today. So how hard is it to find these? And you, you alluded to this a little bit earlier, like there's brands everywhere, but just mm-hmm. how expansive is this? How many brands are out there? Uh, Amazon has a billion listings, for example, it would take us 32 years to look at every ASIN on Amazon if we started right now. Like that's a lot of products and a lot of brands, but like, what is this potential pool? What does it look like right now? And keep in mind, it's changing every day. It's expanding. But how big is this pool? Like if we send another hundred people in to do this business, have we destroyed the opportunity? Like what should, give me your perspective on it, Carl. Yeah, that's a great topic, man. In terms of quantifying, I don't think I could. We're we're talking thousands of brands that, that, are still out there that either need to be on the platform or, you know, there's opportunities. I mean, every trade show we go to, I don't think we've ever left a trade show where we didn't get at least 10 to 15 business cards of relationships that we were pretty confident, maybe not be next week or next month, but probably in the next six to 12 months, as long as we, you know, stayed in touch with them and really was intentional about the relationship I would say at least 75 to 80% of those we were closing within six to 12 months. Just be patient, just follow up, just touch base with them. But I don't think there's ever been a trade show. In fact, I'm pretty confident there's never been a trade show where, I mean, have I been to one and not really put any effort to it and and just walked away? Sure. I I, I will admit that. But that's because I didn't put any effort into it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go there and you really introduce yourself, get uncomfortable, shake somebody's hand and say, hey, here's what I do you know, and, uh, and just be real and be about the relationship, you're, you're going to get success. I mean, there, there's brands out there all the time. I mean, if, if if a well-established seller with multiple companies are able to do what we're doing and we're not talking, you don't have to have a huge major brand. In fact, I would implore you to go to these, some of these smaller brands because nobody's going after those. Right. You can probably move the needle a whole lot more for a brand that's probably doing five to ten thousand dollars a month versus a brand that's doing a half million, right? And they will probably actually appreciate it more because these newer brands, they're intimidated. You know, they're like, oh, I don't know Amazon. I just, mm, it really, you know, I, I just don't like Amazon. So then they get the negative perception of, you know, of anti Amazon because they don't understand it. It's right. a necess- it is a necessary evil. So as soon as we start to explain, hey, you need Amazon because it's a product validation tool in the re- in the retail stores. So I think there's a lot of hidden gold there in the in the lower small brands that people don't want to tap into because it's not sexy. Yeah. It's not you know Mattel. It's not you know these major huge pet brands or dog or these you know food brands. We're talking just local brands that you can walk into and say, hey, you know, like you said. You know, I've got a community behind me. And and that's the other part, too. I think a lot of people don't really think of, they don't get creative. You know how many times I've reached out to people in the community because I couldn't figure, because I didn't know the answer to, whether it was PPC campaigns, listing optimization, or whatever. Dude, I've I've used this community more times than I can count. Yeah. You can even make that part of your pitch. I've I've been teaching this for for years. I mean, I I used to have a, a membership website where we taught people how to use internet skills to help real world brick and mortar businesses. Still a great business mm-hmm. concept. And the thing I said all over and over and over till I was blue in the face. And sometimes it would blow people away when they heard it the first time. But like any of you right now can start using this line. Anyone listening to this, anyone, you know, you don't have to get into the proven wholesale sourcing.com class to use this line. Just join our Facebook group. And then when you have conversations with businesses or brands or wholesalers or business owners of any kind, just say, hey, I'm in a group of people that live, eat, breathe, and sleep, e-commerce, Amazon, online selling, whatever, you know, email marketing, whatever it is. 
Like I may not have every answer you need, but I can tell you this, this group, people, 76,000 of us, you are not going to present me with a scenario that I can't go back to them and resolve and solve. Yep. Some of my best friends, I, I love these people. It's a good group of people. Tell them a couple of success stories that you've heard. It's not, it's no longer your qualifications that are getting you in to that circle of, of influence or like, oh, okay, this is a guy we need in our pocket. It's not mm-hmm. even your story. It's the group of people you're associated with. Mm-hmm. Use that. I'm in a group of people who live, eat, breathe, and sleep e-commerce and Amazon sales and, and creative marketing strategies. And I, I can just say, I can't get enough of this stuff. I'm learning every day. I don't know all the answers, but we know where I to get guarantee it. you. And then tell them one of the cool stories. And that's it. You're, you're suddenly that person. The only thing that you could do that would be better than that is be the guy that wrote the book on the topic. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's like, well, I wrote a book on small brand wholesaling. <laughs> like, okay, that's another level of expertise they probably haven't been exposed to, but they yeah. probably have no one in their circle that hangs out in a group of serious sellers, who mm-hmm. live, eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff and do it at a high level. And they're going to have my back. Anything mm-hmm. you need, that's my team. Right. There you go. You're, you're now ready to have a conversation with any brand, any business and, and present yourself with confidence. hundred percent, hundred percent, man. I agree. And I think that's one of probably the most heavily underutilized areas. Cause you know, whether you're a new seller or a seat seller, they forget about that. Right. They get, they come across this, you know, scenario like, Oh, I don't know PPC campaigns. Yeah. Who cares? I'm not qualified. I need to study marketing yes. and branding and PPC and, and, you know, email. And I don't know anything about setting up a website. I'm not qualified. Yeah. They immediately disqualify themselves. But sometimes yeah. I haven't said in a while, Carl, you'll like this. It's, this is how I push back against that argument. I've done it for my whole career is I don't care what your skill is. You come to me with a skill, pay-per-click, email, paid ad, whatever. I'm going to be able to get online and find somebody in about five minutes that's better, faster, cheaper, more fun to work with, more experienced, better pedigree, you know, flashy, mm-hmm. better client yeah. list than you, right? So it's not the mm-hmm. skills that are going to get you there in this game. It's the, it's the relationship. It's the credibility. It's the guy who took the yep. time to have a conversation and actually cares. Yep. And that's what gets you. And hey, I've got, I've got all the people with the skills in my back pocket. Like those are dime a dozen. Skill people, I got them. I'm going to be a guy that actually cares. That's what cracks the nut. Agree. Oh, Harley. Oh, Harley, man. Beautiful. Well, what else do you want to leave people with, man? This has been a good episode. Just, you know, two guys hanging out, chatting biz. And, and I loved the recap of your story. I'd forgotten some parts of it, actually. Uh, fun going back <laughs> through that, man. Just a lot of history. I didn't realize it'd been a decade, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it is. crazy how fast time flies. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a little more gray hair up here, man. I got a lot more, dude. <laughs> I'll tell you, leadership <laughs> is no joke, man. Building a business is no... It's not for the faint of heart, but no, the rewards, not. man... I was talking with my wife just last night and, and just, we couldn't imagine having done the last 20 years any other way right here. Kids go up, talk anytime. They're in the business with us. They love each other. We, they, they love us. They've, we've done life and business together under the same roof. We've fought challenges together. I didn't vanish for 12 hours a day to provide for my family. God bless the dads that, that did that. I don't want, know mm-hmm. what it's like to be a mom that does that. I know what it's like to be a dad that does that. Cause I did that for a while. Thank yeah. God I didn't have to do that, man. I just treasure these years. And I want that for as many dudes, as many people out there, parents, anyone else, retirees. I want that for more people because I see the benefit mm-hmm. in our family. It's been a huge impact on our kids and how they respond to us and each other. And, and that's just one benefit, right? The financial benefits are awesome as well. But um, it's been great seeing you have that similar journey, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's, it's been an interesting journey. That's for sure. Yeah. That is for sure. But uh it, you know, in terms of this course and the content, man, I, I'm I'm just really excited to get this going and, and really introduce this to the audience. Talk about things that nobody else is talking about. Uh, refresh people's memories of what's been discussed before, because there is good information out there. I mean, you know, the course has been done in the past. They've done an amazing job mm-hmm. uh, at covering a lot of things that were relevant at that time. And there are things that are still relevant to this day, but. You know, as we fast forward, what, a year or two or three, things have changed, right? Software, tips, strategies, techniques, and things you can do, things you can add into your business, whether it's, uh, you know, brand management or, you know, the proven product partner model, exclusives. There's a lot of things you can cover in this as well. But what I'm really excited about is just taking what what's built our businesses 
and replicate and showing everybody else here, here's what's possible. If this guy with, you know, I didn't graduate high school, you know, I, I didn't, you know, yes, I got a GED, right? So don't throw any tomatoes at me, but I do <laughs> no have one a GED. Cares. <laughs> right, exactly. I got a good enough diploma. In our community, I talk all the time, you know, I, and sometimes I'll get into these debates and Facebook and stuff I shouldn't be debating, but people will be like, is college relevant or not? And I'm like, I'll tell you what, man, in my community, I've worked with, at this point, maybe 250 leaders in 20 years. The conversation about if they went to college or not literally never comes up. Mm -hmm. And it almost eliminates you from consideration. You're like, well, I went to Stanford and I have an MBA. I'm like, dude, you're not going to get it. You've got so much yep. to unlearn before you yes. can play in this world, how the world really works. Like, yes. I don't know if I got time to unlearn all that with you. So yes. you know, not that there's not a place in the world possibly for those skill sets somewhere, but it's certainly not an e-commerce and the no. home-based business, small business owners, man. So it, nobody cares, man. It's like, hey, Follow the system. Let's do the work. Let's yes. have some humility, ask questions, learn and grow together. If you think have you're the fun. smartest guy in the room ever, you're not going to last in e-commerce. <laughs> right? You're 100%. just not. You're just not. Yep. Um, 100%. I love your humility, man. Well, it's going yeah, to be a fun class. Uh, it, jump in with this. Like we mentioned, provenwholesalesourcing.com has the information. Within a short time of this podcast airing, the classes will begin. But like I said earlier, you can jump in at any point. We'll be recording them as well and probably selling it as a course package at some point in the future once it's all done. We don't know when or if or how that'll happen, but you'll want to get into this thing as it's launching to get the full impact, ideally. Uh, but I appreciate you, Carl. Was there any final thoughts you want to close this out with, man, before we wrap this one up? We, we hit a lot of ground today, man. I was running late on you too, so I apologize for keeping you so long today. No, it's all it's all good, man. I really don't have any closing thoughts other than, you know, if this is something that, you know, any of this resonated with you, you know, and I was so many people like, man, I don't know if I don't know, I don't know. Just do it. Just take action. You know, this, the investment you're going to have to put in, that you're going to put into this, you're going to get a hundred times that, if not more. There, as long as you take action and you put in the work that, that I'm going to show you, there is no reason at all that somebody can't walk away with 10 to 20 accounts, of course, of how much time you put into this. But there's no reason why you can't walk away with, with some action that's going to pay 100 times what you paid, right? So if you're on the fence or if you're like, man, you know, I, I love this flexibility of the business that presents. I've always thought about getting wholesale, but I always hear about it being saturated, you know, blah, blah, blah. Look, man, <laughs> let this story be a testament that it's not saturated. There's still plenty of opportunities. I don't think you're going to live long enough to where it's going to get saturated. I just, no, I just not. don't. New brands are launching constantly. Oh, yeah. By the thousands monthly. Mm -hmm. And they're trickling onto Amazon and, and, the majority of them need help. That's yep. the reality of the situation. And with a billion ASINs on Amazon right now, which would take us 32 years to count, there's going to be more tomorrow. Yes. And this, there's going to be changes rampant, right? This is, this is evergreen blue ocean opportunity for the next five to 10 years minimum of just yes. incredible, great time to be alive. And, and that's why we can be bullish on Amazon. It's half of every transaction online every given day in the United States. Approximately half of all transactions online are Amazon. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's where the action is. Yeah, there's other options, but yeah, I'm right there with you, man. I've never been more bullish about it. If there was something that was better, we'd be teaching that. Yeah. We teach this because we see consistent success stories from people willing to do the work. And I, I'm honored to have you at the helm of our wholesale operations right now and training. Um, you're a great leader in the community and, and the, let's, sure. let's do it, man. Proven wholesale sourcing.com. Get over there, be a part of what we've got, got rocking. And, and, uh, thanks Carl. Thanks for your time today, buddy. Say hey to your family for me. And, uh, we'll, we'll do man. See you again real soon. All right, brother. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. It's good to see you again. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.